What's up, everybody? Happy Friday, y'all. Alex Padilla with you guys. It's going to be myself, it's going to be John Browner, and it's going to be Jason Lawhead today. Scott out taking care of Bitnet. You know, he's got to go out and sell this show, which he is uh, doing today. But before we get started, we have a great show coming up. I want to tell y'all, you better hurry up. So I was under the assumption that the partnership with Blenders and San Diego State was like, Unlimited amount of sunglasses. They have a goal of 75,000. However many they sell of the 12, you know, it's all going to go to San Diego State. No, they're making a thousand pairs. That's it. They're making a thousand pairs of the San Diego State 12 sunglasses. So you better hurry up and use promo code Kaplan to get 20% off your purchase. They're 79 bucks. If you spend over $50 online, you're going to get free shipping, saving money all across the board. But if you want the San Diego State 12, Order them today before they sell out. All proceeds going to the San Diego State basketball team. So go check them out. Uh, Like I said, limited. If you just go to Blender's Eyewear and search 12, you'll find them. Um, I see they're still currently available. I don't know how long they're going to be available. Ours are already coming in. But if you want the San Diego State 12 Blender's sunglasses, you need to use the promo code Kaplan, and you should buy them today. You should buy them today. And then wear them. If you get them, if you go to a store or something, I don't know. Just wear them as soon as you can. Rock them. Send us pictures whenever you get them. Let us know. But here you go. Promo code Kaplan. Make sure you use them. Shout out to our sponsor, Seven Mile Casino, just minutes away from downtown San Diego. Excuse me. <clears throat> just had a little bit of food. Seven Mile Casino is just minutes away from downtown San Diego and right off the five freeway with all of your favorite table games, a smoke-free environment, and a Sammy's restaurant and bar with a full bar, a great tap list, and according to Scott, the best damn Kung Pao chicken in San Diego. You're going to ask me. I'll tell you right now. You start off with a little duck tacos. You go to a balsamic grilled chicken salad. you are going to move on to probably my favorite arugula and pear pizza. And then you finish it off with a messy sundae. You have some cocktails, some beers in between. And if you're browner, you're like chicken wings, lemon pepper, and an espresso martini. And if you're Scott, you do Kung Pao chicken. They got everything. They got everything at the Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. They got all of your favorite table games at Seven Mile Casino and tons of TVs. So if there's a game you want to watch and you're like, oh, I, I don't, where should I go watch it? Go to Seven Mile Casino. There's tons of TVs to watch your favorite sporting event. F1 is back. If you want to watch that, go watch it there. Why not? Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Shout out to Prize Picks because right now they're matching your first deposit. And first of all, we've been on Prize Picks for weeks now. And if you haven't signed up for Price Picks, please, please, please do us a favor. Please sign up for Price Picks and use the promo code Great Friends or scan the QR code right there. Promo code Great Friends, scan the QR code. They will match your first deposit up to $100. And then you can play along with us. My boy Luke Littler yesterday killed it. Killed it. The, 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 the 17-year-old dart phenom killed it yesterday. Like I said he would. So, and Kyle Kuzma. Easy. So, go check it out. Pricepicks.com. Scan the QR code. Use promo promo code. Great friends. Okay. Got a lot to get to. You got Jason in the house. Browner in the house. Spoiler alert. Four kids in the house today. So, let's see how this goes. I don't even know how it goes. I haven't talked to him yet. But here we go. Let's start the show. Happy Friday, y'all. All right, everybody, what's going on? It's Kaplan and crew with just the crew. Alex, Grande, Lawhead, we are here with you guys today on a Friday. It's going to be a fun-ass Friday, I could already tell. Jason just ranted for about five minutes about his his life, what's happening. Browner is on mute because, guess, spoiler alert, like I said in the pre-roll, there might be four kids in his house currently as we speak, which is never the case. So today's going to be a fun, unpredictable show and then considering that we're probably going to talk about Caleb Williams for like two segments it should be even more fun so thank you all for being here happy Friday Scott will be back on Monday he's taking care of some business and I'm going to take care of some business real quick and just tell you all that we are sponsored and brought to you by the seven mile casino just minutes away from downtown San Diego right off the five freeway a smoke-free environment all of your favorite table games a Sammy's restaurant and bar the great tap list a full bar TVs everywhere. So if you want to watch a game, 
if you want to watch whatever sporting event, they're probably playing at a seven mile casino and you can watch it while you play your favorite tale of the games. And you go to Sammy's restaurant and bar and you can get my fancy ass meal. You can get Browner's chicken wings. You can go get Scott's Kung Pao chicken. They got everything at seven mile casino. It's a clean smoke free environment. So go check them out this weekend. What else you got to do? Seven mile casino, seven mile casino.com fellas, Jason. Thank you for being here. Browner, yeah. thank you for being here because I don't know what it's like to have four kids running around at the, at the time I'm trying to do a show. You know what I kind of feel like? Do you remember when I got the puppy and she wouldn't shut the hell up? Remember like like the early, early, early on days where I got the puppy and she was in the kennel next to me crying and she just, is that what today's going to be like except times four? Uh, times three. Times, oh, three. times three. One does have school. The other three go to a private school and because there's a leap year, I guess this is the day they took off. Not yesterday. yesterday. I don't know. I don't know what's <laughs> going on, man. These these people, they don't. I guess they sent out an email. I don't um, even read emails for this show, and I make money here. So <laughs> I damn sure don't read no emails for the school. But it so sounds think, like they sent you the link. They they listen. They did. They did. In, in, okay. in the schools in the school's defense, mm-hmm. they they sent out lots of emails. They they sent out lots of everything. I don't read my emails. I don't. I, I so hate you emails. did you pack up? The automobile you use, and you drove to the school, and gates were closed, lights were off, and you're like, "What the hell is going on here?" No, so I use the third. I have an alter. I have a, a separate van for child transportation. Alex, you've seen it. I have seen it. It's a lot when nicer than your normal car, by the way. Far nicer because I'm <laughs> transporting hum, uh, humans that, that that are counting on me. When I'm counting on myself, I'll, I'll you know I'll Flintstone that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I got I got ready to pick them up and to take them to school. And uh their mom was like, take their pants. There's no school today. I was like, what do you mean there's no school? No school how? I'm like, what do you mean no school? School is mm-hmm. in not no one, no one's gonna be there, or mm-hmm. they're not going. It's like, oh yeah, no one's gonna be there. They're closed. And I went, okay, well, this just made my day a lot funner. So then I mm-hmm. dressed them in totally different clothes and I and I brought them here. So mm-hmm. there, there's a lot happening behind this camera on the other side of here. Mm-hmm. So you want to flip? You want to flip? You want to flip your camera? No, no, I can get. <laughs> come here, hey, come here. Come oh, here. oh, Lawhead. Yeah, are we about to see Baby Browner right now? Come here. Oh, oh, wow. This is the first. Is this? this is the first. Oh look at this. wow! Look, look at this. What's up, dude? Which one is this? This is Jabari. Say hello. What's yeah. up, Jabari? Oh, Hi, Jabari, you're so cute. He's so you're cute. adorable, dude. By the way, they've grown up so freaking much, dude. So oh fun. my wow. god. Oh my yeah. god. These so Jabari, you gonna dunk on a fool? Well, he can't hear you. All right. Okay, that's right. You're right. <laughs> <He can't. laughs> wow. It's too I can't wow, I gotta Good first work, of all, I gotta Browner. text. I'm gonna Good text work. Scott right now. Scott J- Browner just showed a, one of the baby browners on the show. I feel I think privileged. he's gonna get mad at you, dude. Oh, yeah. He's oh listen, when you don't come to work, you never know what could happen on this show. You never know what could happen. Wow. There's a, there's a, it's a whole party over here, man. So, anyways, good luck to you and good luck to us. I find this very amusing. Uh, so I hope they all just start beating the Come crap here. out of each other and they just over. Oh, by the way, are you about to break the news like that? You have multiples. This is say hello. Hello. What's your name? Hey. Uh-huh. Jaden. Yeah. What's up, Jaden? Get out of here. This is Jackson. Look at you, bro. Hello. 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 Okay. I'll go. Hello. First of all, this is I great. Have two questions. Number one, have you ever said that you have triplets on the show? No. no. I'm blown away right now, bro. No. So this is like breaking news to the great friends. We've never said yeah. it. We've known this, obviously. Of course. We've met the kids, obviously. Right. Well, we've never said it. Browner doesn't ever say anything personal. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but to me, there's a big deal. You just showed your three triplet boys who are adorable, by the way, on the show. Saturday Dude. night. <laughs> there'll, there'll be more insight into this. This is <laughs> nice. I, I had a conversation with Jason a while ago that at some point I'm gonna have to talk about all of this. Mm-hmm. We've we've reached that bridge. <laughs> we've reached that bridge now. So this is it's a great setup to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah Who's yeah. in order? Who came first? What's the order? In, uh, so Jaden was first, and it was Jackson, then it was Jabari. They were born uh, 
a month yeah. early. Due okay. To, when you have that many people inside of a human, <laughs> right? They, they were they, they want out. They want right. out. Right. Uh, they start beating the crap out of each other joke, in the womb. There's a joke right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the the smallest one, the one who was born first, they thought he was gonna not make it, and so that's oh, what wow. was the rush and getting them all out, and so uh, getting them all out. He was the one they were most worried about. He was the mm-hmm. first one out of the hospital. He's been the healthiest one ever since. Um, and so it's been a, it's been a crazy journey to, to go, to go to the hospital for a month straight in the NICU and to see your kids in like tubes and being fed through wires because they, they weren't developed enough to eat and to be doing that and, and to be, you know, not talking about it and just kind of working through it and, Mm -hmm. and and amongst, uh, other things that were happening Mm -hmm. at the time, again, these are my another child Mm -hmm. and so getting divorced and and going through that process while all this was happening it was a it's been a very interesting time in the in the brown life so and also uh, i just want to say from this side perspective someone that talks to you every single day it was absolutely and when you sharing that little part about them being in the NICU for however long and, and all the complications they had it is even more stunning stunning that for about a year you didn't say a peep about it not a single word dude not oh hey i got a lady i got a girl she's pregnant oh by the way she's having triplets oh by the way they're born oh by the way they're having complications like not a peep bro you are a machine and i don't understand how you work i don't don't get it here's here's the here's the sad down down part to how my personality came to be i wasn't raised without a father I, I, this is very, people know this about me. I, I, I didn't grow up with my father. When I did get to know him, he passed. And the part that I did get to know him before he passed, like that was so special to me mm-hmm. that I never want any of my children to ever have such a small portion to have been around their father. And so for me, it's my responsibility to take care of them and no one will ever get in the way of that. And so mm-hmm. therefore, whatever I'm dealing with, it's mm-hmm. my business. It's my responsibility. And it's not to be passed off to anybody else. So oftentimes you never hear me speak of these things because yeah. I don't I don't want any individual to think that I'm dealing with something that I can't handle or right. I'm dealing with something that one I created and now I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Like the, it's my responsibility to carry forward. And there's enough around for them to be well taken care of. And I never wanted it to ever appear that somehow this was beyond me. Yeah. Other than today, when I get an you know email at eight o'clock, what's that, hey, what the, Jason? The the most hilarious part of what Broward said, which is like I, it's honorable and and that do you man? What is hilarious though is that Scott's the opposite. Scott tells you when he has a stomach ache. You oh, know, yeah. like Scott, like Scott tells you absolutely every single part of his children's lives, his lives, his personal life, right. to the point where we're like, bro, can you stop? Can you just like That's you don't true. have to say everything on the show? Yeah. He so Jason, his, his kids, I like that you. When, yeah. I like that you brought up the show tomorrow because Jason, we thought this was a, we love when you fill in. So thank you. And B yeah. what a perfect time to fill in. Cause both you dudes, you're headlining Browners featuring. Is that yes. the term? Sure. Browners featuring dude. How's ticket sales going? Can you tell the friends? Cause I, I, I think, think when you good. said it, I mean, when you I... said it on the uncensored portion, I want you to say it now, like on the, on the first part of the show about the discount for the great. Yeah. So if you say 1090, if you use that code um, by buying online, there's like, you know, you'll check out, let's say you want four tickets. It goes to the checkout right before you're going to total. They give you the total. I think it's $17 each. And then there's a promo code line that you can go into. You hit 1090 and that tracks, you know, anybody that I've promoted to, we've promoted to, um, and you get that ten dollar ticket instead of seventeen dollar ticket um i'd imagine that um it's better to buy ahead of time uh, it's not a huge club um but uh you know walking up to the door you roll the dice i know the second show has sold quite a few because i gave that 1090 code out to anybody and everybody that i know that even doesn't listen to kaplan and crew so um there's people coming and I, oh, i'm hoping a 90 to get ten dollars off no, to get a ten dollar ticket, seven dollars off. So ticket. the regular ticket is seventeen dollars. You can get a ten dollar ticket. Every ticket you buy can be ten dollars if you use the code ten ninety. Um, and so, yeah, um, I, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I was looking through my text. 
sometimes he'll cap that number, meaning like mm -hmm. if he'll give out, because let's say there's 150 seats in the showroom, he might give up half of the showroom. Uh, so he might cap it at 75 tickets. So if, if 75 people already use that code, then mm -hmm. it could be up because then he wants to use his email list to try to give his uh, regular patrons another chance to buy at whatever other code or his, it's just a regular ticket. So um, I, I don't know if that's the case. If 1090 doesn't work, there's a good chance that that there was a cap on the amount of promo tickets out there and those could sell out. Doesn't mean the show's a sellout. Means that the 1090 promo code possibly could be sold out. I'm stoked for you guys, man. I'm absolutely stoked. I have commitments with the wife. I counted the days yesterday. I was not at home 14 of the 29 days in February because of Vegas, because of wow. Arizona, because of whatever other reasons I wasn't at home. So this weekend... I'm all hers. And I was like, what am I going to say? No. Yeah. <laughs> so pre-committed. So I hope you guys have a fantastic show. Browner, you said you're going to talk about the kids. You're, you're just, you're starting, you're starting to talk about more personal stuff on stage now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give anything I'm away. All, I'm, I'm doing all the legal paperwork now. I, oh, I, are you? I, right. Yeah. So the, the gag orders yeah. off. Bro, there was a portion. There was a, there was a large multi-year portion of my life where I was sued. For t-shirts we sold on this show. Yeah, I remember. Like, like that. Yeah, like, the brown it, facts t-shirts got you in trouble. Bro, in a court, in a in a courtroom. Yeah. You know, this show made an appearance on a you know courtroom. Mm -hmm. So it just it's been a lot. It's been a lot to get to this point. And so I'm finally legally I'm in the clear. Relationship wise, with the mothers of my children, I'm in a very mm -hmm. healthy space with one out of the two, and the other one, she's fine. <laughs> as a person so it's been a it's been a very difficult difficult road but there's some things that i've always made sure that i was consistent in one i was always here and ready to go because this show is important to me and that i was always ready and consistent in the lives of my kids and i never i never ever talk about that but i think sometimes we need to know that it's not just us yeah you know the three of us on the show Jason included, you know, working through personal things and sometimes other people hearing something that you may be struggling with or something that you may be pulling along, they're pulling along and, and hearing someone else having issues or being in the same space as you with those issues helps another person. And that's what we're in this for. So you hear that, John, on Instagram? You hear that, John? It's not oh, just no, he wants us to talk. Time, he bro. wants us to talk about you know <laughs> AD's forty against yeah. the Wizards last. I gotta, night. I gotta <laughs> break down the spring training game between the Padres and whoever they played yesterday. Uh, by the way, Scott replies uh, in caps, "What the f?" He does this when I'm not around. So as expected, <laughs> of course, <laughs> as expected. Uh, it is, uh, it is a Friday. It is a uh, it, some people. So some people have today off, I guess. But uh, fellas. I think the big news, and we're going to be joined by Dr. David Chow, pro football doc next segment, because I think there was, I guess it's a really big deal what Caleb Williams did at the NFL Combine. And the way I was, the way it was explained to me by the doc, and he'll join us, is every, the, the, the Combine is the Combine. It, the NFL is trying to make it a show. It's dudes running around in their, in their tight Nike Under Armour, whatever it's called. You know, it's not. Whose junk sometimes falls out. Chris Jones, shout out. But it's not really about what you do on the field. This is the opportunity for all 32 teams to get your medical history, to examine your body, just to confirm that you're good, like to, that you can actually, hey, like today, there's a DB from Alabama, didn't tell anybody, dude's got a broken foot. This guy's up. got a broken foot. He showed up and they examined him. He said, bro, you got a broken foot. He's like, yeah. I do. That's why I'm not working out here at the combine. <laughs> so, like, this is literally what, yeah, this is what teams want to know. So, Caleb Williams today uh, was at, was at his press conferences and did a bunch of interviews. He's like, I am not doing the medical evaluations here. And I'm telling you, according to Pro Football Doc, who was a Chargers doctor for 17 years, even Eli Manning did the physical with the Chargers. When he was like, I'm not going to your team, he still did the medical exam for all 32 NFL teams. And don't get me wrong. Caleb Williams reasoning. I get it. But this is like, 
this I think this might be the first player of the future players to, to maybe do this because there are not 32 teams that can or will draft Caleb Williams. So why do all 32 teams need every single aspect of his medical history and what he's currently doing right now? I understand that. But it, at this moment where we sit today is a very historic thing that he did. And people already are saying, well, he's already, well, so he wants ownership of the team. He wants this. He wants that. He wants it. It's just like adding to the list of the diva things that he, people are really trying to paint him as. I don't know, Brown, your, your future quarterback. No, making some history. No, 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 no. Listen, don't do that to me. What I'm at some, some points you can be vocal about say what you don't want to do. By not by going out of the normal, Caleb Williams and his people, they know that there is a stigma around them about his behavior and what he wants and his requirements and X, Y, Z. So you don't now when you meet with people, when you meet with reporters, say, yeah, I don't mind playing for the Bears. I would love to get drafted number one to the Bears or if something happens. I will, whoever takes me number one, I'm happy to go there. But also at the same time. Throw a monkey wrench in there and go, yeah, I'm not. No medicals for no one, no, anyone, not for him. no, anyone. nobody, nobody get medical, and so that that makes that makes me think that's his way. Now, what if he gives medicals to certain people, like let's say the commanders? Well, the he's commanders doing medicals only. to to people that he's meet to teams that he's meeting with. Only the teams Which that he's meeting with. Four teams. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, now again, I agree with you. Hey, if if you're you know Kansas City, you don't need my medicals. If you're Buffalo, right. you don't need my medicals. If you're right. Cleveland, you don't need my medicals. Yeah, I'm Bengals. Good. Like go through the list. Right. Chargers, Hold you don't need. You don't need it. Chargers, yeah. y- y- you don't need them. You don't need these them. teams are just going to use it against him because they're going right. to play against him. Mm-hmm. That's a good point too. I didn't even think about it that way. I mean, how do you have the medicals on a guy that's going to be a top pick and he's going into your division? I mean, you don't have a chance to get him. You don't need him, whatever. It's not on your depth. Yeah, Yeah, now you can use that against him. Don't need his medicals. The Lions and the Packers don't. Minnesota might get crazy and and say, hey, well, we're going to make a move for you because they don't don't technically have it. They have a guy, but they don't have a guy in the contract. Mm -hmm. But they're two teams in a division. Why would you give the Lions your medicals? Why would you give the Packers your medicals? For what? What are they going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll get more, much more into it. It is today. I believe it is today's top story, but there is a lot to get to. The Aztec football schedule was released. There's some stuff with the Padres. Scott Boris talks about free agency because Blake Snell's still out there. Lakers yeah. did win. Uh, Caitlin Clark made some news because I guess she's taking a pay cut because she's going pro. Uh, college football, big news out of college football. Something that I've been harping about for years. And then uh, I, I, I think, sorry, John on Instagram. Fellas, I, I went to the movies last night and I got to tell you, Everybody need to go. Everybody needs to go to the movie this weekend because what I saw last night is what movies should be. You're muted, Marley, by the way. Bob Marley? Kung Fu Panda 4? No, I did see the trailer for Kung Fu Panda 4. Didn't even know there was a 2 and 3, to be honest with you. Uh, Dune 2. We'll oh. get my review later today. Okay. But, fellas, we are welcoming a new sponsor this week, and it's a beautiful time to bring them on, and that's Blenders, because today... And by the way, I read this totally wrong, Browner. Chase uh, Fisher told us that their goal is to get $75,000. And we were like, oh, they're just going to sell unlimited amounts of, of these sunglasses, the 12s. Nope. Dude, they're only making 1,000 of these. They're only making 1,000 oh, of these San Diego State 12s. All proceeds going directly to the San Diego State basketball team available starting today. And they're currently, as we sit here recording the show, still available. I cannot promise you that they will be available. But currently, right now, they are. They're called the 12. So if you go on blenders.com, use promo code Kaplan, you get 20% off. Search 12, and there you go. But Mom Butler rocking the 12. So if you want them, make sure you use the promo code Kaplan to get 20% off and buy them this weekend because I don't know how long they're going to be around for. Ours are on the way, Browner. Ours are on the way. All right, when we come back, Dr. David Chow will join the show. Pro Football Doc at Pro Football Doc on Twitter. We'll talk about combines, not just Caleb Williams. There's a ton of quarterbacks that we all need to talk about. So we'll see what's going on because the combine is this weekend. Jason is in the house. Browner's in the house. Both of them performing at the Grand Comedy Club. Go to CaplanCrew.com to buy your tickets. Use promo code 1090 to get a $10 ticket. We will be right back with Pro Football Talk.
All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just the crew, Alex Padilla, John Browner, and Jason Lawhead with you guys. By the way, they are performing tomorrow at the Grand Comedy Club. Jason headlining, Browner featuring. You can get $10 tickets when you use promo code 1090. Buy the tickets at kaplanandcrew.com. Go to our events page, click on the page, and it'll take you to the Grand Comedy Club's website. You put the promo code 1090, you'll get a $10 ticket. Jason said the second show is close to sell out or like limited available, so hurry up and go cop those tickets before they sell out. Uh, good luck to you guys. But right now, we are joined by the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, who is in parts unknown because, Doc, some history was made today out in Indianapolis at the NFL Combine, right? The way it's explained to me, what Caleb Williams did today has never been done by any player refusing to do the medical evals. Is that correct? That is true. I apologize here. Maybe a little background noise. This is where internet is on uh the uh, lodge in Montana here. You can look outside oh, the wow. window here. Look at you. And, uh, and I am representing, so, you know. Nice. By the uh, way, I love that hoodie. Can you, can you show that hoodie again? I like that that lettering. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, Caleb Williams. Look, I've been in the Combine 20-plus times with a couple of different teams, mostly with the Chargers, with the Vikings, with the Bears, etc. Never once has a player refused the medical physicals. Never once. This includes back in the day, Eli Manning, when he didn't want to come to San Diego and he was manipulating himself in the draft, even with John Elway, his man manipulation of the draft, nobody has ever refused physicals. I'm not calling Caleb Williams out. I'm not saying his strategy is bad or his reasoning is not logical. I'm just saying no one has ever done it. And they have been plenty of players who have been in his number one draft position before. So it's sort of an interesting strategy to take to not do the physicals at the combines. He says he's going to do them with the individual teams, but there are those implications too. Now, I will admit that there are plenty of times where players have modified the physicals and said, look, I just had knee surgery, so you can't examine my knee. I'll come back for rechecks. Or a doctor will say, look, he just had shoulder surgery. We don't want 32 teams tugging on his shoulder. Only one team doctor will do it. You can all watch. So there are ways to modify it, but it's an interesting strategy from Caleb Williams. Doc, can you Doc. explain to the people real quick? Sorry, John. Uh, just what is the medical evaluation at, specifically at the NFL Combine? And is it different for a, for a projected top pick as opposed to like, oh, he, this guy might be a fifth, sixth rounder? No, from a medical perspective, we treat everybody the same. There is one medical examination that's done by one of the 32 team doctors, and this involves your heart, lungs, allergies, concussion history, EKG, stress tests, things like that, lab work. Very thorough, like an executive physical. And that's done by one team doctor, and all the teams share that information. Orthopedically, there are six rooms, and all 32 teams have the right to examine every athlete, sometimes on multiple doctors. So from my perspective, if I were advising Caleb Williams, and I'm not, he hasn't asked me, I have no, he doesn't have an agent, I have no contact with Caleb Williams, I might have said, why don't you do the medical exam because the lab work and other things are complicated, and you don't want to repeat that for Washington and Chicago and wherever else he's going. Just do that, because that's not onerous. That's one exam that's comprehensive. And if you don't want 32 teams to get your medical information, you could say that. There's privacy rules. And you could say, look, I'm just going to have the Bears team physician examine me orthopedically, and you five other teams can come watch if you want to. Uh, you know, if that's he's worried about privacy, but this so, sort of refusal and then doing it individually. Look, uh, the whole process, if you do a thorough physical and you're not waiting in line, it's at least a three, four hour process in terms mm -hmm. of doing all the lab work and tests. Do you really want to repeat those in, in the different cities he goes to? So it's an interesting strategy. The bottom line is. You know, exceptional players, exceptions are applied to. That that may be the case here. But I wonder how teams will look at this. Look, uh, when I was interviewing for my orthopedic residency or for a job and other things, I kind of did what the prospective employers told me to do. But maybe I'm a sheep. Maybe he's trying to be an individual. But it's an interesting uh, strategy, et cetera. 
Doc, so clear, help help us understand something and kind of clear something up because this seems a, a tad cloudy. So is he not doing exams for anyone or is he simply doing exams for three or four teams? Well, he spoke uh, earlier today and he said he's not doing any physicals at the combines. That's right. medical exam for the combines. And he says, look, 32 teams don't have a chance to draft me. Why should I share medical information with 32 teams? And he's not allowing USC to share his medical information with the teams. That's what teams do. They go to the colleges, they sign a waiver, and they get the medical information. He's not allowing that to happen for privacy reasons. That is his absolute right. But, of course, he hasn't missed really any time, but it brings up the question, of what, what is there something to hide here? For example, and I'm not saying it's the case, there was an Alabama cornerback who was discovered with a Jones fracture. Mm. He's going to need surgery. Mm -hmm. He's not allowed to work out at the combines. He says he's going to try and work out at his pro day and then uh, have the surgery. Is there something being hidden here? I don't know. I'm not saying that there is, but he is not sharing his medical information with anybody. But he does say when he does team individual visits, likely the Bears and Washington, who else? I don't know. Atlanta, New England, I don't know who else near the top, that he will undergo a physical. So he's not completely refusing. He's just taking about it, going about it in an unusual way. And I hope people see, I'm not dogging on Caleb Woods. I think it's his right to do so. I'm just calling out that it's never happened before. And I do say that it is a little bit unfair that there's been a report about the uh, his dad asking about equity ownership. You know what I mean? In, in teams, first of all, that is an absolute ridiculous question. It can't happen uh, by NFL rules. And besides a rookie weight scale, but you know, in an era of NIL, maybe he thinks other things can happen. Look, Tom Brady, who's retired, had to get approval to buy a piece of the Raiders. And quite honestly, if he unretires, he has to sell the Raiders, his stake mm -hmm. in the Raiders. But it's not an unfair question for a dad to ask since they don't have an agent. I do think some agents may have thrown dad under the bus who, they know they're not going to represent Caleb Williams, and so they leak this information to reporters that make the dad and, and Caleb look bad. They're new to the system. It's fair to ask every question, and, and, and uh, you know, it's fine to say no. But So I am defending some of the things that Caleb Williams and his dad is doing, but I just find the physical stuff very un unusual, the tactic. Yeah, and Doc, if, as far as Caleb's medic, as far as Caleb's medical history goes, does he even have any red flags on his draft profile? Like, is there any reason why the Bears medically would be like, eh, I don't know, that's a red flag? Uh, right now, medically, and I'm sorry, I just put uh, the speaker up to my ear to hear because it's loud here. Right <laughs> yeah, we'll now, medically, there this. is no reason to be concerned on Caleb Williams. He had a hamstring issue, not a worry. He really didn't miss any games, not a worry. But let me tell you something. Every year out of the 330 guys that come through the combines, there's a couple that end up with a uh, red flag or temporary red flag on a heart issue. There's uh, a Kool-Aid, uh, the, the Alabama kid, with a Jones fracture, right? There are some things that can be discovered. And I'm not saying that there's going to be. And I'm not saying he has anything to hide. And he has every right to privacy. I just think it's just an unusual tact that no other player, and plenty of players have been Heisman Trophy winners and been number one position. No other player has had that taken this tap. That's it. Right. Right. Hmm. Well, Doc, uh, go ahead, Jace. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, in I, I kind of, you know, think that it's not a bad chess move when you're a top quarterback, especially in, in a league where you've seen – uh, so many uh, teams try to take every single advantage they can, with, um, whether it's stealing signs or the old bounty gate that the Saints did. If I know I'm only going to be selected by one of three or four or five teams, why give everybody else anything to use against me as a quarterback? Well, I think that's a reasonable question, but and you could take that tack. Uh, why not? Like I said, he has every right to. The question that I have, and I'm not one of the decision makers, is that this is a pretty simple process. Everyone has gone through it. If you want to restrict the information to certain teams, you have the right to do that. You can say only these five teams can get the information. But instead, he chose not to give the information at all, which is his right prerogative. How do teams look at this? 
Now, I'm not in the GM room. I'm not a GM. But could a GM say, is this the guy we want to be the face of our franchise? A guy who has skipped interviews after losses. A guy whose dad is asking about equity ownership. A guy who holds himself because he's in a special position outside the physical and what it is. It's a question. It's something that he will have to address. And Look, that's what in the, the end, I think does. talent wins out, right? And so it's <laughs> probably a non-issue. But right. look, that's the number one story right now. And it's yeah. just literally historical. No, Man. Look, when Eli Manning and his dad did not want to come to San Diego, they did not refuse a physical from San Diego. They did not refuse medical information to go to San Diego. It's just an observation that this is a very unusual tactic. Well, Doc, we'll let you get back to your uh, ski trip up there in Montana. Thank you so much for the time. We've taken enough of it. Uh, enjoy yourself and stay safe. We don't need you popping and, up and one, on the injury one report. final thing, Alex, that I want to put in there. There's been a lot made about head coaches not going to combines. To me, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being big news, people have made this out to be a 7 or 8. Some head coaches aren't going. I think it's a 1 or 2. In my 20 years going, I never met with a head coach when I was there. I met with the GM. If you want to show me a GM who doesn't go, that is a big deal. Remember, this is the scouting combine. The head coaches that aren't going do not have personnel control. So why would they be scouting? Now, Sean McVay's not going, but all his assistant coaches are going. So they're still getting players seen. And remember, with COVID, they started Zoom interviews. So Sean McVay can still sit in on key interviews with players and get what he wants. And look, I've been to India a lot. It's a bear to go there. It's a lot of work. It's tiring. Maybe he's got other things to do and other coaches too. But I think it's really a non-factor. And another part of it is when you're the head coach at Combines, it's such a spectacle. Everyone's selling you something. A former player is, can I be your assistant coach? Or I have this data, or we're selling you this, or this product. Everyone's tugging at Superman Cape, including when you walk through the lobby. Maybe they don't want to be involved in that. They can still get information off a of video and Zoom. And remember, they're not the ultimate draft decision makers. So I look at this news as some coaches not going as a one or two on a scale of ten, not a seven or eight. I didn't even. Well, I don't even think we talked about it, to be honest with you. I don't even think we talked about it, Doc, because Cabo is a lot better this time of year than Indianapolis. A lot better. A lot better. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate the time. Always do. That's Pro Football Doc. Sixscore.com. Go check out uh, Sixscore.com and follow Doc at Pro Football Doc on twitter yeah man i think like he said it like is it a big deal it's a big deal because he's the first guy to do it but is it a big deal in general i don't think so for me as a as a player who as a person who wants their team with the number one pick to make the right decision to me this is just another thing that's not necessary that's becoming a thing like he could have just let usc release the medicals he don't have to do anything for them to do that yeah i just think for him in particular the idea that this kid is a diva, and then you do something diva-ish. You, there's, as a face of a franchise, there are some things that you just, you got to do them. Yeah. And he Well, just, here he is, just, uh, well, let's let him talk for himself. We've been talking about it. This is Caleb Williams uh, earlier this morning from Indianapolis talking about his decision. I mean, obviously, when you start doing things that's not traditional, whether you're at a school like USC. And I support you 100%. Yeah. Trust me. Whether you're here at, at the combine yeah, that's yeah. been going on for I don't know how many years, but a long time. Right. So um, <clears throat> I'd say the the main thing has just been, you know, it was a decision with my family and my team. Um, and, and it really came down to not all 32 teams can, can draft me. So I give all 32 teams yeah. um, my personal medical things. There's nothing there. I played all 30, yeah. how many ever games I played. Never I don't even came. remember you being banged up right to the slightest. I've never yeah. came off the field unless my it. helmet came off and the ref took me off. Right. Um, and so, you know, my thing has just been, you know, give it to the teams that, that are going to pursue me. Um, so all my visits, I'll be doing medicals, but just didn't, des- didn't decided not to do it. So there you go. Is it you think it's a diva move, Browner? That's, that's what you was trying to say because you don't want the guy? Not because I don't want the guy. <laughs> I'm saying there's a list of things that people are now 
Hold on. Go ahead. It's okay. Go. It's okay. See, this is what I love about today's show, Jason. We just don't know when Browner's going to have to go on mute. But Jay, what do you think about all this? This is this well, a thing? Is it like I've, obviously Browner's very much emotionally you know, attached to that number one pick sure. and Justin Fields? He already declared. I don't even know if you know this. He declared if Justin Fields gets traded, he's going to be a fan wherever he goes. He's leaving the Bears. So I, obviously I there's him. there's emotional attachment there. But what do you think from an outside perspective? Well, I think that there's enough other red flags with Caleb Williams when you come to the idea of some of the just, you know, personal kind of emotional choices he made during the season, his father, the baggage, the questions there, uh, the questions on his size, you know, um, you know, really at the end of the day, where did he take USC? Where, where did they go in a conference that, you know, really wasn't that strong? Um, uh, you know, I think there's enough of those and look, Caleb Williams or not, I don't mind. I actually think, as I mentioned to the doctor in these days of these teams gaining every single advantage over every piece of article of anything that they can, whether it's stealing signs or, you know, um, you know, bounty gates or whatever else is going on behind closed doors to get every gained advantage. There's only a few teams, a handful that are going to have a chance to get him anyway. So why give any other team anything that they can use against you on some type of report or medical report? Just go meet with the teams you're going to meet with, whether you're Caleb Williams or not, because this is the most vital position in sports. It's you know, one of the most dangerous when it comes to one hit away, you're one legal hit away um, with 11 guys always coming at you. Right. So See, uh, anyway, go ahead. I just think that they're sorry about the interruption. There's just too many things around him off the field for me as a person. Me taking too. him number for him for taking him at number one. There are too many things off the field. When you get this many warning signs, as an organization looking to take a guy, when previous number one picks that have had warning signs, they may not, quote unquote, bust, but they're always something. And the last place where there needs to always be something is the Chicago Bears, because they have all. What, what are you doing? It's not working. <laughs> if you're the Chicago Bears, Brown, I'll cut you off while you discipline your kids. While you're the if you're the Chicago Bears. And you have Justin Fields, and you have a guy, Justin Fields, who, you know, whether you want to highlight these statistical improvements or not, he has statistically improved every year he's been the Bears quarterback, okay? The Bears, in a lot of other areas, have gone backwards. Now, uh, they they did a nice job towards the middle and the end of the season as, as they ended the season, but... Is Caleb Williams uh, worth giving up everything that you have around you to build with Justin Fields if you maintain these picks? You keep what you already have in the queue, keep Justin Fields. I mean, I just don't say, I just think I, even if he releases medical and it was the most greatest medical, uh, you know, that we've ever seen. It was like a Donald Trump physical. I'm Trump just saying. Level medical. If it, yes, it was the greatest. Nobody's ever. I mean, <laughs> even if he had that, the there's medical. enough other red flags from his his leadership, uh, his his father, the distractions, the baggage. How and really the, good is he? And, and why my, give up all that when you have Justin Fields, who's gotten better? And by who, the way, from a Bears perspective, from a Bears perspective, a person who watches every game. The one thing that you are not concerned about Justin Fields is off the field. Right. So he's got that ace in the hole. When Caleb's doing these things, he has to be the Bears organization has to think that he is so, so much better than Justin Fields that they're going to take him because Justin Fields as the leader, the, the, the face of the franchise has been fantastic. And he's proven that he can take lumps in Chicago already Correct. and get through them. Caleb Williams, I mean, when the good was the good at USC, little old USC, when things were good, it wasn't always great. Okay. There were always there was always something wrong, even when, you know, things were positive, so to speak, at USC. And, you know, they were 
uh, above water with wins than losses. And, you know, they would come out of the gate highly ranked. And by the end of the season, um, they went backwards. USC always went backwards as a team, no matter what Caleb Williams numbers say. Uh, to me, especially in this last year, uh, the Bears forged forward with a lot of challenges. I mean, Justin Fields was up against a lot, and he could have just went under a rock, and those numbers could have went south and abysmal, and the Bears could have been the worst team in football, but they weren't. They 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 played pretty good football down the stretch and um, you know, had themselves in an NFC wild card playoff picture. I mean, they should have beat the Cleveland Browns. You know, they gave that game away. Fields yeah. almost throws the uh, Hail Mary to win it. If they win that game, they probably find their way in that last two weeks of the season. Well, we'll keep talking about it right now. I got to cut you off, Jake, because yeah, we're out of time. We'll talk about it more when we come back. This is Kaplan and. These are the best commercial breaks of all time. You can hear all three of Browner's kids singing Old MacDonald Had a Farm. E-I-E-I-O. Uh, this is Kaplan and Crew with Just the Crew, Alex Browner and Lawhead with you guys. Once again, I'll say it every segment. Tomorrow, the Grand Comedy Club, Jason headlining, Browner featuring, Grand Comedy Club, two shows. And Jason, can you tell? Because you, I love how you're like, we do early shows. So you, what time are the shows tomorrow and the promo code again being 1090? 6.30 p.m. first show, 8.30 p.m. second show. I love it. Get in the house a little early uh, for the mm -hmm. 6.30. Get down, get some couple cocktails, get some pizza, get some dinner. And uh, that show, you know, 90 minutes, usually a run. So uh, I'll be doing about 45 at least in the headlining spot and um, second show. 8.30, get to get there around 8 to get seated, 8, 8, 10. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have fun. It's going to be a fun night. I think there's going to be a really nice crowd on hand uh, for both shows and a uh, um, nice way to kick off March. We're going we're gonna to come in like a lion. We're going to come in yeah. like a lion. Yeah, this is uh, this ended up being a lot better than that, like, random Wednesday, Thursday show when it was a down storm. Down for the day, two days doing. leading up to it. So everybody was already yeah. checked out for the week. It was almost like everybody, you know. So, yeah, this works out better and uh, mm -hmm. gets people. And a Saturday night is always the best night. Yes, absolutely. You can scan that QR code right there if you're watching the show. Uh, it'll take you straight to the website. You can go to our events page and buy their tickets there. Or you can just go to kaplanandcrew.com to buy your tickets everybody show up tomorrow and support the boys and uh real quick we are brought to you by price picks price picks boy browner dude we got a new money maker man we got a new money maker luke oh. littler the 17 yeah? year old phenom dart player just hit more every time more my boy luke litter dude he killed it yesterday oh by the way kyle kuzma obviously who's going to show up yesterday so those two were winners yesterday at prize picks if you have yet to sign up for prize picks, first of all, what are you waiting for? And second, uh, go sign up and support the show. Use promo code Great Friends. You could scan that QR code if you're watching. Uh, great Friends, they will match your first deposit up to $100. Today is Flex Friday. Plenty of deals happening. Browner, is there anything on? I, I know you're busy and I know you, you got three kids in front of you, but have you looked at today's board? Is there anything standing out to you tonight? Uh, you got a full slate of NBA. Anything this weekend? That how about combine forty speeds today? That's always a fun one. Jason, would you ever price pick someone's forty time, like Jaden oh, Daniels, nah. more no, or less four point five one forty time? No, I, I wouldn't. I would have to no. I, it, 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 yeah, I don't know what the turf. Okay, like. I gotta. Uh, I gotta tell you, dude, <laughs> the turf. JJ JJ McCarthy's forty time is a four six one. That seems really low oh. to me. I mean, like, slow, oh. slow, right? No, no, no. Like, no, like that. If he runs, oh, you four, think he's six, faster than you if he runs faster four, six, than you thought it would be? I does doesn't does he scream speed to you? Listen, I I'm not on the JJ McCarthy whatever is this bus is that people are driving for this kid. I'm yeah. sure he's a great kid. This guy's not an NFL quarterback. Like Patrick man. Mahomes ran a four eight, and this guy's gonna run a what? A four six one. 
No. That seems I'm gonna go uh, that's yeah, I'm gonna go a little I'm gonna go more on that one if I had to take a guess. Uh but I honestly I have no idea. Never seen the guy. Michael Penix Jr. is a four six four. So you tell me Michael Penix Jr. is gonna run slower than JJ McCarthy. Well, McCarthy's long. He's got two ACL chairs. So yeah, I don't Penix. mean anything. Well, no, Michael I mean, Penix you... is taller than JJ McCarthy. Hmm. J- I did this, I I don't JJ McCarthy had one loss in his career. That's awesome, okay? But you were playing with arguably one of the best coaches in college football, and you were a run-first team. Like, you literally won a game where all you did was run the ball. That doesn't, that doesn't you know, inspire confidence in your ability at the next level. And then I watched you in the championship game against a solid college defense. Really seem, oh, it's average. Yeah. I'm not, that's not a first-round quarterback to me. That's not a first-round. I don't that's think a, he's a first-round quarterback. But these yeah. are your top quarterbacks. Uh, well, PricePicks.com slash Great Friends. Uh, use a promo code Great Friends. They'll match your first deposit up to one hundred. They're both six three, and Penix is carrying almost fifteen pounds heavier than yeah. McCarthy. If you're looking at this draft board, I would say per, for sure the top three are going in the first round: Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels. And then I don't know. I don't know if teams are going to reach on Penix just because his injury history. I mean, the guy is hurt every single season. Bo Nix has been in college football for about ten years. And J.J. McCarthy, I mean, do people even give him any credit for winning the national championship? Or do they just give the defense and the run game the credit? So I don't know. I don't know how many first-round quarterbacks there are. I don't know if – Four. Four. There will the be fourth? four. Who's the fourth? I Penix? Think Bo Nick, I think Bo Nix is going to sneak in okay. at the end of the first round because a guy with that much experience, a guy with that much success, and that many starts. I think mm-hmm. the, the key to me in, for a quarterback who can be – Ready, it starts. I wouldn't be shocked if you see Pittsburgh at the end of the first round go with Bo Nix because he's got the starts, he's got the arm talent. And so to me, he seems more ready of all of them to compete right now. Him and him and Michael Penix Jr., but Michael Penix Jr. has, you know, no legs. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, yeah, it'll be I I think, and by the way, if you but the Jaden Daniels say- hype train is, is picking up steam, by the way. That Jaden Daniels hype train is one hundred percent picking up steam. I'm on I saw that thing. What? I saw Lewis Riddick on on ESPN this morning, who's been on the show many a times, and we got to get him back. Scott's old college roommate. Uh, this is him talking about Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. And I think his game translates perfectly to the NFL. And I'm telling you this, from what I heard in term, terms of some of his meetings that he has had, he comes off super smart. He knew exactly what this offense uh, entailed last year at LSU. He can explain it from A to Z. And he's someone, I'm telling you, there are people who think that this guy is the best quarterback in this draft. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to go number one. But I'm clo- I, I right now have him basically neck and neck. And really what it's going to be, it's going to be about the comfort level that a team has with him that's going to decide it ultimately. Yeah. Okay. So what, which but, Heisman Trophy winner you want? Right. The one who seems to be getting better I, I or just, the one who seems to be well, the yeah. – Jaden Daniels was in college talent. a lot longer. A lot yes. longer. You know, yes. Caleb Williams not only started for two years. Jaden Daniels, here's the comparison. Played uh, almost 20 more games in them, uh, but stat-wise, they're very similar. They both run a lot too, which is which is what you kind of need almost nowadays. Both Heisman winners. Okay, I wouldn't look at. These but do you though? They run a lot. Like look in at the big the picture. Do you yards? though? What's that, Browner? Three thousand yards compared to. Well, he was a starter yards? for five years as opposed to two years. You could forget that Jaden Daniels transferred from Arizona State. He played at Arizona State for three years and then went to LSU. Jaden Daniels has been a starting quarterback, a starting quarterback in college football for five years. So that's why he's got two thousand more yards, with three more you, years. Even if you, even if you double to start, no. Even if. You, <laughs> By the way, if you're just tuning in, real quick, if you're just tuning in on radio or wherever you're watching, uh, Browner's three triplet boys, breaking news, are in the house with him for the first time ever. So. That's the kids that you hear. Those are the lullabies you're hearing. Those are the children's songs that you're hearing. His kids are literally right next to him. So first of all, shout out to Browner for powering through today because you easily could have just called out, but he's the Iron Man. Uh, so that's the noise you hear. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? Say hello. Hello. Which hello. one's this again? Jackson, sing old McDonald. Oh, McDonald's. Oh, 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 oh
That's it. <laughs> so what are you doing? Short, that was the short version. He just cut yeah, out. He just cut out yeah. some of the lyrics there. This is the I second time that. you let me down with a performance, son. Like, you're not coming up no more. Come on now, man. Mm-hmm. He had a church. He had to sing at church. So he, so they, they uh, due to their class, they all have to do a performance at church. He sings all day, all the time. It comes time to perform at the church. He got nothing. He won't sing. He just sit down on the stage. Um. So what were we talking about, Jaden? Yeah. Either way, it is. It is interesting, and this is always what happens every single year, right? Like. Besides the Andrew Luck here, isn't it always someone's coming up, someone's tumbling down? This is just what happens. Who would who would you say though, out of this group of quarterbacks that we just looked, who would you say honestly, from what you've seen, mm-hmm. has the best pocket presence of any of those quarterbacks? I got to tell you, one hundred percent brutal, brutal, one hundred percent honesty, dude. I've seen Drake May play zero snaps. Okay. I've seen Bo Nix play maybe a half. I've seen Jaden Daniels highlights and mm-hmm. I've seen every game of Caleb Williams' career. So okay. I will tell you Caleb Williams, <laughs> just because that's what okay. I know. I've seen All the right. throws that I... Caleb can make. I've seen him do it outside mm-hmm. the pocket, inside the pocket. Caleb okay. Williams has not been blessed with incredible. He doesn't have any first rounders coming out this year. He did okay. have Jordan Addison last year. For me, I think Jay- Caleb Williams I... is going to be a very good pro, a okay. very good pro. All right. Uh, I may disagree with a very good pro analysis, but I, and I may say from what I've seen, the best pocket presence to enter into the NFL might be Penix Jr. Um, out of all those names. And what we've seen, I think a lot of, and, and the rushing yards are great. Guy with his legs are great. All of that stuff's great. But then when it gets to the nitty gritty and why can't Lamar Jackson get a team to a Super Bowl or or the the the, the criticism of you know Justin Fields is a great Josh runner but Allen. they got they got to run they got to run less Josh Allen you know yeah he's a great runner but they got to run less and when you look at the guys that were there at the end of the season this year and we're in the vital games you know uh Brock Purdy uh uh pocket presence Jared Goff pocket presence Patrick Mahomes, yeah, he'll bust a run every now and again, but that's not his M.O. He's a pocket presence quarterback. So the guys that struggle under the big lights, yeah, gaining yards throughout the season, that's that looks great uh, over the course of the statistics. But in the NFL, in this NFL, to be successful, to carry a team, Joe Burrow, not a runner when he's healthy, mm-hmm. pocket presence, uh, has gone far. Um Matt Stafford won a Super Bowl ring, not a runner, pocket presence. So these are nice things to be able to run and use your legs like Daniels and Caleb Williams and some of these other guys. Um, and I know that Penix has been injured to a, to a degree, but the college football game is a lot different than the NFL game. And if you yeah. can keep Penix in that pocket and you can keep him protected, and with that southpaw arm and the ability he has to get it out quick, I mean, who gets it out the fastest, too? Um, I just, I don't know, man. I mean, to me, Penix Jr. looks like the most ready NFL quarterback going into a situation that is beneficial um, With if you've got some weapons around him and you can keep him protected because he gets rid of it quickly. And to I me, will, he's got the best NFL pocket presence. I will add to what Alex, I will add to what Alex was saying. I've seen Caleb Williams probably play eight times. Uh, probably two last year toward the end of the year. And then I think four or five games this year. Um, I've seen, no, I've seen Bo Nix play maybe four times all this year. I've seen Jaden Davis play three times all at the end of the year. What happened, what was better for me is I saw him play the Florida game, which is like the game everybody says put on tape. Mm-hmm. I've seen, obviously, Michael Penix play probably the last four games of the season. So, I would say to me, the guy who has the best, I'm in the pocket and I'm playing on time. This is the way the play is designed. Bang, ball comes out. It was Bo Nix. Now, if you ask me if, okay, bam, that's not there. Give me something else. That's Caleb Williams' Jane Daniels. Drake made the no for me. I didn't <laughs> see him play enough. I saw, a half, I saw a half in two different games because they would say, oh, this guy's as good as Caleb Williams. And I was like, no, he's not. And North Carolina had two NFL wide receivers on their team. So I don't know where the Drake may, you know, 
noise came from. Yeah. But you, I, I watched him play, and I was very underwhelmed, very unimpressed. I didn't think he was special. I just thought that he has the physical mechanics that looks like the prototypical uh, Justin Herbert, Josh Allen body size, and people drew to that because he can throw far. Yeah, I mean, the same way that I didn't know where the Trubisky train hype, hype train came from. You know, the same co- same school, exactly. and that didn't work out. I mean, he did go to the playoffs once, I guess, but yeah, it's uh, it's always fascinating to see like where did like how does Trey Lance get drafted so high? How does Carson Wentz get drafted so high when you're playing in North Dakota State? You know, what I mean, Joe Flacco from Delaware. Sometimes these guys just come out of nowhere, but this is that rare instance where the top two quarterbacks are from prestigious college football universities, where both of them have Heisman's. And honestly, can I tell you that you'd be stupid to take Jaden Daniels? No. I like, can't tell you that. I don't know. Because nobody knows. Nobody knows. But I do know this. And Browner is going to disagree with me. The Bears are taking a quarterback first overall. It's happening. Justin Fields is not getting traded. I mean, Justin Fields is getting traded. The number one pick is not getting traded. You're muted. And I see the boy. I don't, I don't think. I'm going to say this, and again, this is what I believe. I don't think Justin Fields is getting traded, but I wouldn't be surprised if they trade from one to two or from one to three. Here's, here's Ian Rappaport telling you why that's not going to happen. Here's my understanding of where it stands for these Chicago Bears who once again in Indianapolis hold the number one overall pick. In order for them to move off number one, to trade number one and forgo the chance of taking potentially Caleb Williams at the number one overall pick, it would need to be a historic draft haul, a crazy draft haul. And I have not yet talked to any team, one, willing to make that happen, or two, that believes they can. It certainly seems like the Bears are heading in the direction of taking Caleb Williams at number one, which would mean... There you go. No one has that ammo or wants to give up that ammo. That's That sounds great coming from Ian Rappaport. He doesn't know. It's a speculation. This is from stuff that, quote unquote, he's heard as an insider. What I what what I think will happen, again, I'm not, I'm not an insider. I just, you know, follow the mm-hmm. team every day. That if they're going to take a quarterback and, and they, I, I think they're going to keep Justin Fields. I think they're going to trade back and I think they're going to try to work with I think they're still going to take a quarterback. Don't get me wrong. But I think they want capital and they want the quarterback. They want the best of both worlds. And I think they can get that. I think they're going to trade back to two or three. And then they're going to take a quarterback at two or three. Now, I think they should take Marvin Harrison because I think he's the best player in the draft. But that's a whole different conversation. Even he didn't show up for his press conference today. Red flag. Red flag. Mm, right? Yeah. If we're going to, we got, we're going to spread it. That, we're going to spread the, the red flags it evenly, right? It has to be yeah. equal. Yeah. I mean, Marvin Harrison didn't show up. So there you go. Jay, you, did you answer your own question? Who's who's who? I, I just think if, you know, everybody, everything I've seen and with size and, uh, you know, the ability. Yeah, Caleb Williams had a great year, but, you know, he's not going to be looking over college defenses anymore, you know. And, you know, the, 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 the size scale goes drastically different on the other side of the ball. So when you're playing 11 – defensive NFL players every week that belong in an NFL defensive starting lineup. Um, You know, pocket presence at the NFL level is way different than college. It just way, it just is. And I just feel like, you know, to me, Penix Jr. fits the mold of a more ready going into the NFL, looking over the, I mean, look, he was a little off. He was a little off. He was a little off uh, against Michigan just on some throws. A just, lot off. A well, lot off against Michigan. I, I don't think he was a lot off. I, I was going to say, he like, that's literally some, that's the last memory balls. I have of Penix. And, man, he was bad in that game. Well, I don't bad. know if he was bad so much as he was uh, uh, just. I was bad. I, I, I don't think he was bad. You know, the running game was hurt, d- depleted. He was yeah. playing the best defense we've seen in college football in many years. Many years. And so – what I think is when he's when he's scattered around a bunch of other college players that aren't going to go to the next level on his side of the ball, he held up against a defense that's going to send a lot of guys uh, to play on Sunday and one of the best. So 
Was he off? Yes, he was off. He was a little off over the top. He overthrew a few balls. But to me, to me, you put other NFL guys around him protecting him. You put an NFL running game scheme around him. You put an NFL tight end around him. And all of a sudden, uh, he gets a lot better. I just felt like, you know, to me, he stands up to that type of level of defensive pressure going in early as a young quarterback against everything else that we saw yeah. on that list. Yeah, I Maybe mean, I'm wrong, but be, I just – When is the – That's my way, eye is, test. My eye test tells me that. When is the draft? <laughs> April 20-something. Like, April 25th. So plenty of time. Browner, you're going to be sick of this conversation by the time April 25th comes around. But I guarantee you this. We'll have some resolution with Justin Fields by then. Like, by then we'll know. Officially. Jeez Louise, man. I hope so. That's, again, whatever – I trust Ryan Pose will make the right decision for the Chicago Bears. Is what this a I draft day do trade, do you right. think? But is this the, a draft the, day trade if they make the trade, or is this uh, preemptive? Is, do they do they so solidify this before, move he, if they make he said the he move? He would do it before free agency. Before he said he would do it before right free before free agency. agency. Yeah. Okay, which I is a couple weeks, that, right? Free agencies in a yes. couple yes. weeks. Yes. So how far? How long after when Justin Fields gets traded somewhere? Do you then show up with that team's jersey like the the next day after that? Do you just day go one. to the store? Day when you day you got to customize it. NFLshop.com. Okay, just want to make sure. Just want to make sure that NFL Falcon, Falcon feels one. Okay, cool. Just want to let let people know that that happens. Yeah, you will disavow the Bears and you will put your flag no, no, no. on your my, new team. My bear fandom gets my bear fandom gets split. It's twenty five percent. My fandom gets split. Twenty five percent Chargers, twenty five percent Bears, fifty <laughs> percent Atlanta Falcons. What if it's <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers? Ooh. 75% Pittsburgh Steelers, baby. Wow. Yeah, representation is important. So when you got my dog Mike Tomlin as my head coach. Well, ooh, dude. It's, it's my quarterback. What about Raheem Morris? Representation too, man. I, I got to see him do it some more. All right, man. We'll be right back. Uh, some Padres news to get to. Some Aztec news to get to. And highlight of the day. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just the crew, myself, Browner, and Lawhead. And like I'm going to say every segment today, these two are going to be on stage tomorrow. The Grand Comedy Club and Escondido. Jason headlining, Browner featuring. Tickets can be bought for as low as $10 if you use the promo code 1090. Go to KaplanandCrew.com. Go to our event page. You can buy tickets directly there. Use promo code 1090, and you could get a $10 ticket. Two shows. 6.30, 8.30. You're, in home, you're at home by 10.30 in bed on a Saturday night. Three yeah. People, three people that care about that. So there you go. Go check them out tomorrow night. Support the show. We always appreciate you guys. And we know there will be great friends there because there always is great friends there. So shout out to y'all. And good luck to you two, boys. Um, I just have to say one quick PSA. Browner, I don't know if you get this as much as I do. And it's probably because I'm on the Kaplan and Crew social media pages. Some of y'all need to let it go, man. Some of y'all need to let it go. That could be a long list of things. Blake Snell's not signing with the Padres. Ooh, the, but like, in their defense, but, in their defense, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I got to back them up on this. In their defense, the longer this goes, what? Why not? Well, okay, why not? here, here's some cold hard facts for you. If he and taking, Jason, if he out here taking year by year deals. Why but not? the year by year deal is still what's the number? What's the number? Because here it is. Currently, where the Padres stand, I, I went up and I, I needed to find this just to tell people this is why it's not happening. <laughs> Currently, the Padres payroll for 2024, uh -huh. as it stands, $152 million. Now that's well below the threshold, the C the, the tax threshold, the CBT threshold. Of 237 million, which if you do oh, that, then you get taxed. But because the Padres have so many big deals and the way those deals are structured, their tax figure, and y'all can correct me, but this is my research, 215 million right now for 2024. That gives them approximately 22 million dollars right before they get to that threat, that tax threshold. So you're telling me. And I don't know how this stuff works, 
But you're telling me, unless this dude takes a Otani deferred till 2070, you're telling me that Blake Snell is going to take less or about $20 million for one year? Again, let's... Two years, 44? Let, let's just say this. because And that puts them right there. That means they can't do right, anything saying, else. But, like, right, they can't do nothing, dude. This is, this, this is what I... I just want to be very clear about what I say about Blake Snell. It is... Oh, oh, you muted you. Something happened there. Something happened there. We lost Brown. Go, you go... I love today's show, by the way. This is something Scott would say. This is something Scott would say. I love today's show. There's three kids running around Browner. He's distracted. He's trying to make okay, a point. Man. And then as soon as he makes a point, he mutes himself. It's great. Destroying everything. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I was muted by someone else. Okay. Uh, Blake Snell, this, the idea that the longer it goes, the more chances you have. If, if, if he defers, because that's out there now, too. If he defers, and he two. Deferring. At 20 million for a year, we now know that Blake Snell cares about lifestyle. Sounds like that, it. If that's not the case, he'd have taken the Yankees' money and the Angels would have never come up. So this guy cares about lifestyle. And you know what I say about people who play here? They love it. Mm -hmm. They absolutely love it. It's part of the reason they suck when they get here because it's awesome. Go outside right now, go outside and get some air. It's snowing in other places, okay? So what I'm saying is Blake Snell at 20 million isn't a stretch, man. It's not a stretch. We'll I think it's 10, a bit of a stretch. Defer the other 10. Well, he's not gonna defer because he doesn't have that kind of he doesn't have that kind of uh grip Cash. like like Otani that well, meaning that Otani is gonna make off the field money during this deferment that is just Correct. Uh, mind boggling eye popping that a Blake yeah. Snell just doesn't have that kind of charisma or or person endorsement he money just doesn't, doesn't exist that. like that. It, it doesn't exist for Blake Snell I don't care if he's on his fourth Cy Young award in a row it just isn't there um so I mean, Otani sponsored by a country you know what I mean? like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> I mean it, absolutely a continent uh right you know um uh, so that part of it all is you know it's neither here nor there, but, yeah. but Snell, I don't think is obviously Boris or Snell. I don't see them. They don't take any, they're not going to do a one-year deal anywhere. It's going to have to be two, even on the lowest end, it's going to have to be two 50 million in that neighborhood. Uh, would he take a, would he, would he stay home for lifestyle at 22 million to keep him at the tax two year 44 with, uh, you know, a bonus if he wins another Cy young possibly, but, mm. um, so I agree with Browner in the sense that I don't think, you know, in defense of you know, the let it goes, I don't think it's still impossible. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I think obviously Boris is still feeling the so speaking of Boris, the there market. was a press conference yesterday, and I love what you just said. He is feeling the market because I think Scott Boris one hundred percent overplayed his hand with yeah. both Cody Bellinger and Blake Snell. Sure. And I think now, yesterday they did it, or was it this morning? They did a press conference. Uh, in Arizona with Cody Bellinger and Scott Boris. Uh, not his fault, not his players' fault, but the market's fault. Right. When you go into these things, there's variables. And what are the variables? And the variables relate to uh, teams and, and such. We have some irregularity going on in this current market. We have close to 11 teams that are spending less money than they did a year ago on, on competitiveness in light of the fact that we have record revenues in baseball. And when you have that irregularity ongoing, that obviously is something that we had, I think, 15 contracts of four year or more signed in 22. And then in 21, the same. This year, we've had four. So it's the, the irregular, irregularity of the market. You know, teams last two years were just handing out money. How dare they Wah. figure out that those deals are stupid and, they've and been burned. nobody wants to give these right. monies out. <laughs> they've been burned. The Bogarts types of contracts. I mean, and like it, well, there was a, a, a period of money ball and then, mm -hmm. okay, let's go spend a bunch of, well, it came and it totally overcorrected overnight. And so you've got all these monster contracts and not everybody can defer like Otani. It's just, or will, so you have this like clash of the Otani deferment 
and everybody else getting burned on a, either a Bogart deal or whatever other long-term deal they feel burned you on. Start and then pool holes. You can look at Rendon. It's not just exclusive to the Padres. This is of course. I'm just baseball. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. The current one that matters here in San Diego, Xander Bogarts. Right now, people are not loving that deal. Maybe some people like Scott don't love the Manny Machado deal. You're looking at you, Darvish. That dude's got five yeah. years left on his card. He's gonna be 42 years old. He'll be 42 years old pitching on this team. Yeah. So when Scott Boris talks about the irregular irregularities of the market and how teams uh, are making more money, but they don't want to spend it. No, they're just smartening up on their money. And I'm not sitting here to tell you guys that players shouldn't make the money. I just think in baseball, these 10, 12, 14 year contracts, what? Like those yeah. days, I think are numbered. And I know we just got a few of them. And I know the Dodgers just handed out a bunch of them. But those, I don't, for Cody Bellinger and Blake Snell, I just don't see it. Well, the, the non Dodger teams that were doing that are going to have, have now ceased that operation, right? So right. the Dodgers and the Yankees can always, uh, always, and will always be able to offer that. But these other teams that tried to jump in, and when the Padre, when a team like a Padres gets burned on a deal or a Mariners gets burned on a Cano type of deal, like then they go, we can't do that anymore. Like we tried to do what the Dodgers do with one or two guys. Well, they can do it with five or six, and we, right. we don't even want to do that anymore. And you're muted, Browner. I know you're trying to make a point. So, so the two Texas teams. <laughs> yes. The the Rangers and the Astros. They seem that they seem <laughs> to have the ability to do it. Right. The Dodgers and the Yankees. That's the list, buddy. That's yeah. the list. And you so gotta remember too, the Padres don't have a TV partner. The Correct. Padres are doing Padres.tv. The Dodgers are getting a hundred million dollars a year from their television partner. The Yankees have their own in New York. You know, like these these teams are bringing in this income, this revenue on absurd levels compared to the San Diego Padres. You know, right. Peter Seidler's gone. I just want to reemphasize that point too. Like that dude was going above his means for two or three years there. And now we're back to reality. Are we going to be a Oakland A's again? You know, are we going to be a $50 million payroll? No. But are no. we going to be... Are we going to be breaking the, the tax threshold year after year? No. Even the Dodgers just, stopped doing it for a year because they didn't want to do it anymore. It was Scott Boris's job to read the market and forecast what he could get. If mm -hmm. I'm Cody Bellinger, yeah. I'm side-eyeing him like, bro, listen, I already heard this speech. You don't need yeah. to sit up here. I don't, why are you yeah. here? Why yeah. are, You already lost me money. By the way, he, he, out like a fool. he was at Xander Bogart's press conference as well, the one that I went to because I'm a member of the media sometimes. So, like, this is the Boris thing, man. He's the Jerry Maguire. He's, you know, he's, he gotta be up. He's Diddy. He gotta be all up in the videos, uh, uh, dancing all up in the video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think that if you're Scott Boris, I don't want to hear about you talking about the, the market varies or fluctuates, fluctuates, because at the end of the day, that's your job. That's your job to figure that out. So what are you going to say when it happens to Blake Snell? The same thing. Oh, the market was unpredictable. Oh, yeah. That's your job is to predict and by the, the way, market do you guys, who has money. Do you and guys, he contributed to this, th yes. this volatility in this market. Yes. Right. It's, it, it, He's it, the I mean, reason. He is, <laughs> yes, he is the Bitcoin. <laughs> I also want to point out that I no longer ever, I no longer believe that the Yankees ever offered Blake Snell $150 million. Me neither. I think that was Scott Boris putting it out there to try and drive the price up somewhere else. And I do not think that Blake Snell has been offered a $150 million contract by the New York Yankees. Nor do I believe. He would have took it. Yeah. I think he would have took it. Absolutely. And anybody would have took it. Or by now, he would have taken it. it, it that, so let's, that report so let's that say, there was an offer on the he table. He would have took bro, I would have it. snatched that thing. So let's say, <laughs> let's say that that at one, just for the sake of this conversation, let's say that at one point in time, it was an offer like that out there for him. And he mm -hmm. wanted to take a couple of days to see what else was out there. And the Yankees went, wait, what? No. Right, right. It was take it or leave it. And you didn't take it. So we're done with you. And so now that offer is gone. Because if I'm the Yankees, I'm not sitting around with $150 million for you to just keep dating around the room. Nah, bro. So I believe, I'm like you, Alex, that offer is gone. Or it never existed. And the Yankees were doing him a solid by saying, oh, yeah, not denying it. I think no it was way. never I think it never existed or because I think the Yankees would have outed him. I think the Yankees would have said these guys balked at that. 
you know, and and it, it would have outed Boris, and it, because they're they're not going to let Boris get away with using that as some kind of you know, uh, I mean, if if they balked at 150 million to go play for the Yankees, right? I think the Yankees would have outed that. Yeah, and I think that Browner's point about lifestyle, he doesn't want the pressure, and I brought up he doesn't want to shave. You know, that could be part of it, but I think we would have heard about it by now if that offer was real. Like, the more you – the longer this – dude, it's March 1st. You know, the Dodgers yeah. and the Dodgers play in 19 days. 19 oh. days. They're traveling to Korea in, like, two weeks. Like, literally probably less than two weeks they'll be in Korea. Like, this – they're going to leave Peoria in, like, 13 days, I believe. So, this isn't the early days of spring anymore. This is, this is, this is mid-spring. The season is upon us. And there is no deal. And listen, I could be overreacting because the Padres and Dodgers play earlier than everybody else. I think opening day is the 28th, but still. Blake Snell, if he had $150 million on the table, on the, if he had $150 million offer on the table from the New York Yankees right, right now, now, he would be a New York Yankee right now. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. He'd be I waxing his lip. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything else right. they asked him to for $150 million. Right now, it's time for the highlight of the day. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. I also want to point out, before I get to the highlight of the day, that there are two of the hosts. Okay, I'll say it this way. Three hosts, four hosts, if you include Jason, eight children, part of the family. (laughs) All eight children. Start their name, start with the name J. Just put that together. I just put that together. Ah, that's the thing. All of them. All of them. Justin, Jillian, Jaden, Julia, Baby J. Oh, and wow. then what are your kids, your boys' names again? Jaden, Jackson, Jabari. So there's two Jadens of the eight. Yeah. I don't know if they're spelled differently. J A Y D E N. They're all J- there are number J's on this team. Number That's J's right. on this team. All right. Promo code is better bud. Spend a minimum of $75 at Tori and California Holistics. You're going to get seven. You're, you're going to get 20% off your purchase at Tori and California Holistics. It's unraveling at Casa Browner with as he has triplet boys. Uh, that's my highlight of the day, Jason. He went public with that news, but I also it's do have a real the big, highlight. It's the, the highlight of the week, highlight of the <laughs> month, highlight of the year. Yeah, I actually think that this has brought so much joy to me today that Browner shared this news. I don't know why. Like, the fact that we don't have to keep another secret anymore. The fact that we could just say we went from, oh, yeah, he has four kids. to now we were like, oh, yeah, he has triplet boys, and they're adorable. And Look at them. But anyways, uh, Jason, have you heard? This is the real highlight of the day. Have you heard of the story of Chief Saholic? Chief Saholic. Chief Saholic, a unofficial mascot for the Kansas City Chiefs who would dress up as a wolf with a big old red Kansas City jersey, go to every single Kansas City game, uh, was like one of the top recognized fans in the NFL. Chief Saholic. Like a bank no robber idea. or something? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, then I, 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 right, I, this is yeah. a continuation of the story that I brought up earlier, okay. Brown. So he pled guilty to a felony bank robberies where he stole... Five, no, excuse me, eight hundred thousand dollars worth of cash to go to games. Like he That's did what it. He was to, doing it right. He was doing it so he could go to all these games. It was like like the movie Point Break. They were just robbing banks just so they could go around the world and surf. Right, right. We're not trying to like <laughs> roll around in Lambos and stuff. I'm just trying to go watch exactly. Mahomes play some football. Uh, so he faces up to fifty years in prison. I wanted wow. to play this yesterday. We didn't get to it. This is not an SNL skit. This is a true clip from the news this is chief saholic this is his lawyer this is a statement that his lawyer decided was an appropriate response to his client pleading guilty to felony robbery where he faces up to 50 years in prison this is a real clip this is not fake from the beginning of this case folks the government has been blitzing and xavier's pocket was collapsing but today xavier stepped into the pressure He took responsibility for his actions. He stood up in court, humble and repentant, and admitted what he had done. Now, if I know anything 
about Xavier and if the Chief's Kingdom knows anything about Chief Saholic, we know that he doesn't give up. We know that if he stumbled and he fell, he didn't let his knee touch the ground. And that's because he's capable of doing a great thing. And he knows that there's still hope. We still have a lot of work to do on his case, but Xavier wants everyone to know that he loves the Chief's Kingdom, he loves Kansas City, and he hopes that you'll rally to his support. Thank you and God bless. That's I love him. That's, that's Matthew Merriman, a.k.a. Better Call Saul in real life. Oh, that my was, God. <laughs> that was incredible, his, dude. His knee never hit the ground? What? <laughs> the pocket collapsed. And his knee never hit the ground. Did this guy think uh, that his client didn't it. play for the Chiefs? He's aware of that, right? His client was I don't never think so. a member of the I don't think so. I think I don't think so. I think you're a Chiefs holic. He's oh, he plays for the Chiefs. Cool. I mean, just we used what? to be a serious country. This place used what? to be somewhat no. of a serious country. It's all over. It's, it's over. just <laughs> all of it has just been down. It's, it's just it's not serious. This First of all, the case wow. itself is the case itself is awesome. It's going to be a movie. I guarantee you, it's going to be a movie or a terrible like Hallmark series. It's going to be like bear cocaine type of movie. cocaine bear. That's cocaine bear. bear. It, that, it's going to be like the, it's going to be yeah. at that You're level again. of like ridiculousness. Like it's uh, going to be a holic is what it's going to be. Chiefaholic. Can you imagine? Just, it would be literally. Who said it? I don't for it is literally Point Break. Like I said, that. This, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. He, says, like, he, did. he robbed the banks just so they could go surfing. They didn't have any other intent. They weren't like, you know, master criminal minds. They never wanted anybody to get hurt. It was like the last thing was like to shoot the gun. They 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 wore you know president's masks to make it funny. Dude, that's what this is. But this guy's gonna Cocaine wear. Bear was a great movie, by the way. Cocaine was it? Bear was a great movie. Yeah, it's awesome. By the way, has there ever has there ever been another movie that was a like, hey, these kids are just gonna do cocaine? No, and we're just I never not gonna even just gonna anymore. laugh about it. Like that's what right. the whole premise of the movie was that these kids did cocaine. I got and then lost the, in the woods because a bear. The bear finds my cocaine. bear finds the cocaine and gets all coked yeah. up. Yeah, and then his little baby man. bears, and then his little baby bears get the cocaine. Right. And then there's now there's three little cocaine bears running around. Oh, one of the best movies of all time. Dude, listen, I I I will have no slander on cocaine bear around here. If Keisha Hollick turns out to be as good as cocaine bear, I'm in. By the way, Elizabeth Banks directed Cocaine Bear. Yeah, I was going to say somebody, a famous, like somebody yeah. legitimate. Yeah, yeah. it was Good Elizabeth job. Banks. Good call. Yeah. And a true uh, story. Which was should we talk about? Should Crazy. We, should I give my Dune 2 movie review for exclusive Go. or uncensored? I want to see it. I want to see it. Should I, but we're running out of time. Should I do it for exclusive or uncensored? I'll do it for uncensored so everybody can see. So th there will be no spoilers coming for me. None at all. But I do want to. Because damn. Brother. Browner, Ooh, I saw it at the lot too. Oh my god! I don't know. If the lot's cool. I don't know if the lot has amplified their speakers, but damn. All right, real quick. Uh, promo code BetterBud. Spend seventy five bucks at Tory California Holistics. Go stock up for the weekend. You're gonna get twenty percent off your purchase. Tory and California Holistics. Oxnard Holistics coming soon. I'll be doing a show from there, uh, and I'm very excited about that. I'm working with Charlie through that uh, on radio, uh, LA Football Network, on podcast, uncensored. Next. All right, y'all, we are done for the day. This is Uncensored. Uh, once again, if you missed it, uh, these two performing at the Grand Comedy Club, go buy your tickets, Kaplan and Crew, uh, kaplanandcrew.com, and use promo code 1090 to get a $10 ticket if they're still available. All right, real yeah, quick. Be fun. I went to the lot last night, 7.30 show, to watch Dune 2. Jason, did you watch Dune 1? Are you a movie is guy, that? by the way? I'm a movie, of course. I'm a movie guy. It's been a while since I've been to the theater. But Dune 1 meaning like the original or the remake? No, oh, the, man, remake the remake on HBO that was Come released on, during oh, COVID yeah. with Timothy... No, I haven't that seen one? that one. That I haven't one. seen Sorry. that one. Zendaya yeah, for two seconds. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah. In the first one, like they advertised Zendaya. Like, oh, Zendaya's in his movie. Really Zendaya. She was in it for like two minutes at the end of the movie. Anyways, uh, so I went last night. 
No spoilers at all. I will not say a single thing about the movie itself. I will just say this. I don't know how else to say it. That movie's why we fucking go to the movies. Ooh. Like, that's why we go to an actual movie theater. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can watch an incredible movie at home and be all up into it. But when you go to the theater, you go for that shit. Like, you're like, fuck. Like, that was a movie, dude. Like, so, whether you like the movie or not, at the end of it, you're not going to leave there saying, like, yo, that shit looked cheap. The CGI was terrible. Like, you know, you're not going to see... Like, you're going to leave there and be like, fuck. I just saw a movie, man. Like a blockbuster. I saw Doom 1 in the living room. I thought it was amazing. I thought it left a little at the end for me to be like, oh, wait. Because I Also, had, I had if no you remember, of- they, but they never marketed it as part one. Right. Because I, they just I said didn't know, Dune. I didn't, right. I didn't know it was two parts. Me so neither. when the first one ended, I was like, what the fuck? This movie yeah. is over? Oh, give me yeah. more. Give me more. And right. so then they told me about that there was a second one and how long it was going to take to come out. I was a little frustrated. I understand oh, what you're saying called. about those kind of movies. Because when Tom Cruise did The Last Mission Impossible, you need to see that movie in a yeah. theater. Right. All his movies. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So that was the last great action movie I saw was the Tom Cruise movie. I'm going to go see this Doom because I've been waiting on this. I was planning on watching it at home. 861 days. That's how long oh. ago it came out. Mm-mm. Because of because COVID. of COVID, because of the writer strike, because of whatever, it's been delayed and delayed and delayed. And I rewatched Dune, still loved it. Mm-hmm. I went into it knowing exactly what I was going into, and I was like, "All right, I might now, double up tonight." Movie. Did they leave re-watch. it open for a part three? No spoilers here, sir. No gotcha. spoilers here, sir. Uh, I might I I'll, might watch Dune and then go watch Dune to tonight in the movie theater. I might double up. You know how, like, in some movies, obviously nowadays off, like, comic book, well, the comic book movies are kind of dying down. But you know how, like, when you see an actor that you've known forever and then they throw on a costume and you're like, look at this actor in a costume. Mm -hmm. The thing about Dune is that you know every fucking actor in that movie. Like, you've seen them in something, right? Like, I'm telling you, Thanos, like, Josh Brolin's in, like, literally name them, they're in it. Dave Bautista's something. Uh, Fucking Christopher Walken is in it. And wow. like it doesn't take you out of it, you know. You're not like, oh, look at Christopher Walken playing the emperor. Like, no, you're like Walker as emperor Ev- in the blank. Zendaya isn't is in a million things, you know. Like Timothy Chalamet has been in a bunch of things, but you, they all. Oh, Elvis, what's Elvis his face? is in it? Austin, uh, Butler. Austin Butler, dude, incredible at whatever uh, character he was. I'm telling you, like, you know every actor. Oh, the 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 girl from Mission Impossible, Rebecca Ferguson is is in, dude. I'm telling you, they're all wearing these silly costumes and these crazy makeup, and you're not looking at them like, oh, look at this fucking guy in this makeup. Like, the, this, whoever directed that movie, shout out to you, man. And like I said, whether you like it or not, that's up to you to decide. I'll just tell you that like, you're not going to leave there upset that you sat there for almost three hours. It's Dennis Villanueva directed that movie. Mm-hmm. Is it better than, uh, so when it comes to like action remakes, is it better than Mad Max, Tom Hardy's Mad Max from a few That's years a great ago? question. That was I pro- fantastic. I that literally would put it in the same category. Okay. Because yeah, they I really like that one as a remake. Yeah. They both they're a, uh, they made another Mad Max, Furiosa Road. Yeah. They, they both have to deal with like desert and dirt, sure. but they're completely different. Like the way this Dune one looks as opposed to, because a Mad Max is pretty bright. Out right. in the open, like Dune is like you're in a fucking sandstorm, you know, you're dealing with like some crazy shit. Anyways, that's my review. God, man, so man, if you awesome, if you got time to go to the movies, go to the movies. And we'll if you think I'm wrong, I'd love to hear why you think I'm wrong. Like I said, whether you like it or not, Monday totally we're going to, to see uh Monday we're going to a matinee to see the Bob Marley movie. See, like um, that movie to me, like I would definitely want to watch it, but I could watch it at home. Like I, sure. I don't feel a need to go to the theater for that one. Sure. But we love the sense? music. We love music. So right. we love like that. Like, you know, that's something we want to see in the big screen. If like, yeah. you know, we we wanted to see uh, Bohemian Rhapsody on the big screen mm-hmm. with, uh, you know, the, the the Queen movie and that kind of thing. So um, but yeah, I'm going to have to maybe uh, entertain the idea of going to do maybe what we'll do is we'll uh, theater jump if it's like after go. Marley and it's there down the go. hall. We'll go down there. Bro, and I watched it. um I watched it at the lot at Liberty Station, and I picked because this was like sold out everywhere. And I picked second row. Oh, bye. but 
No, but it was like it was only like eight rows, so it was still did you lean back, right? There was nobody behind me. You can order because I was against, there, I was too, against you know? the wall, mm -hmm. and there was nobody in front of me because it was the walkway. It was the perfect place to sit. And yeah, we got food, we got drinks. It was it was awesome, but it is long. It is. Yeah, we're going to Sinopolis for this one. I like that one too. I love Sinopolis. It's, theater, it's yeah. just a little too far for me. Yeah, yeah, Omar, a bit yeah. of a drive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, movie started at seven thirty. We got in the car at ten thirty. So it's three hours. Two oh. hours and forty six minute running time. It says mm -hmm. that's a long movie. There's a long movie. Even the servers tell you too. Like, yeah, it's a long movie. Like, Buckle right, up. Long movie. Buckle yeah. up. Uh, but all right, boys. Uh, Jason, thanks for filling in. Yeah, good luck fun, tomorrow. Fun. Thanks, Jason uh, Browner. Goodbye. Incredible that you shared the news. Goodbye. Yep. See you later, bud. And Goodbye. good luck to you tomorrow, man. Go, everybody, go buy your tickets and support these two guys. Have fun. And uh, real quick, remember, because Scott wanted me to say this, uh, blenders that the 12 the limited. They're only a thousand pairs of those sunglasses, San Diego State. So Ooh. buy them before they sell out. All the money goes to San Diego State. All right, everybody. Browner, go be a babysitter. Do your thing. Love Peace. you guys. Peace.